Well, I know our next topic is around uh, Microsoft again here, but they added some phishing alerts to to their forms. And I think that's critical to point out because it's such, to me, was such a loophole, right? That you could host forms up through SharePoint, make it look like it's legitimate uh, website, uh, sharepoint.com or on Microsoft. Uh, SharePoint.com or whatever the case is, and it looks legitimate. People put their guard down when things look like they're they're the right thing to do, and then all of a sudden you put your username and password in, and then bam, they can get into your environment. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I, I've done far too many of these investigations. I mean, I, I couldn't even begin to count them. I mean, but it's such it's such a common attack vector because, as you said, it brings. It brings the um, the user's guards down. They're like, oh, okay, I have to I have to reauthenticate again. Let me just type in my username and password, and that stuff gets scraped. You know, the the underlying code on those backend forms is just basic JavaScript stuff that collects it, sends it out to another email address. I mean, it's a very easy attack to execute and then do at scale. Mm-hmm. By far, like a, you know, simplified social engineering, right? I mean, it's kind of like, hey, you know, here's this thing that that looks good. Like you said, I'm already kind of logging in. Oh, it's Microsoft. Yeah, it must be fine. Okay, sure. You know, here it is again, and just you know, you're you're off and running. So, you know, they kind of take the simplified approach and you know just just ran with it. But it, it's definitely cool to see how they're you know, adding a lot of this. And also, what's cool is they're adding it by default and turning it off. It's like, hey, you know, this doesn't look right. You know, uh, we're going to flag it, alert you, unless this is you know for some valid reason, which you know probably isn't. Um, at least kind of having that, that intelligence built into the platform, I think, is is, is good on Microsoft's part to you know, continue to enhance their 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 cloud platforms and, and security tools. Yep. And if you think about all the corporate uh, security training that goes out there, why do you think 80, 90 percent of that training is all around phishing? Right. Because that's the biggest loophole is it's the people. Right. At the end of the day, it's a human factor of being weak to going in and, and clicking those buttons or putting the data into something that they shouldn't shouldn't put well, in. Well, it's such a it's such a timeless strategy too, because you know, as organizations grow, new employees come in who may or may not have this information, this knowledge, people entering the workforce who may not have this knowledge, vendors that you may contract that may not have this level of, you know of uh of awareness and so it again it's timeless the strategies just keep changing you come up with more uh complicated pretexts with uh that you know taps more into the human psychology and then over time these things just develop um you can't you can't get rid of email completely because it's a fundamental function to our to, our, to any business so it's like we we it comes down to really under using as many security controls as you can but con, you know combining that with that security awareness um it's it's a continuous effort you know, and I don't, I don't think it's something that's we're going to ever find to have a silver bullet solution to other than ongoing security awareness training, phishing, uh, uh, phishing simulations, and, and really just getting very used to the lay of the, the land that we currently are in. Yeah, definitely. You know, and, and that's to your point, though, it's good that Microsoft is, is putting some of this stuff on by default. I think traditionally, particularly in Office 365, I mean, if you look at the way that you can set up a admin account, there was no requirement put to two FA on it. I mean, it was it was very easy to set up a single factor admin account and forget about it. Um, and so, that's always been kind of my gripe with Office three sixty five. It's incredibly easy to use um, from an administrative perspective compared to legacy technologies. But just the things that should have been on security wise by default uh, would have saved me many many nights of sleep. <laughs> by far, well, probably, think about teams, companies, right? right? Money, yeah. <laughs> Teams out of the box, you can use external email addresses and chat with somebody. Well, you're going to let your guard down because your company is letting you use Teams most likely and somebody messages you something and it could be spam and you don't realize it. Oh, yeah. I mean, just even from a data spawn perspective, I mean, IMAPs enabled by default on the accounts. Uh, you can do 40 external email address. Just things that are mind-boggling that post-incident we have to go in and turn off that are the first thing the attackers go after. 